Today, we are simulating an actual diagnosis. And as, as uh, Alan said, uh, last year a group of your peers did a field study with a Kellogg cereal plant in the UK. And we have their permission to use this case study, but uh, they wanted us to not use their name on the paper because things sometimes get uh, distorted. So anyway, we have their permission to use it. We have the permission to use their name verbally, just not on the case. So that's the Great Grains case that you, uh, that you read. Yes? Just to point out, there's a big Tony the Tiger in one of the pictures <laughs> in the case. So uh -huh. Oh, in terms of disguise, <laughs> there's a big Tony the Tiger? Right there. Well, not the big, but it's pretty obvious. Okay, well, I have to go back and change that, that picture then, because that was not that was not drawn from the case materials. I I was on the internet scouting for any boxes. Anyway, okay. Um, so we're we're going to spend some time that I want to set the stage for that, and we want to kind of reconnect your thinking to last week for just a minute or two weeks ago, and uh, then we'll then we'll uh, we'll proceed with the diagnosis with the simulation. So, all right, and especially since we have a few students who have joined us. Can anybody who was here last time, can anybody explain the significance of this little diagram for us? Why is this relevant to would-be organizational designers? Well, Beth, guess, go I, for it. I can tell you what we did. So the question was how many squares are in the right. picture, and the, your mind kind of, you tend to think along certain lines until you realize like looking at it in different ways, or seeing different things highlighted, but there's more than you initially thought. So okay. It's about like looking beyond what's immediately obvious and, and trying to see right. what's doing. Right. A lot of people in organizations, managers and consultants, they only see the 16 squares. And they, that's all they know what to do with. And they, they can dabble with that, they can do some constructive things in that. That's all they know. But in an organization, there's a lot of interdependencies going on. There are a lot of dynamics going on that that doesn't capture. And so, does anybody remember how many squares we eventually counted were up here? There were 30, okay. This was number, oh, wait a second. Ah, okay. So there are four of them right there. And then there were the two by twos. And the point is, this square represents a dynamic. There are nine parts that make up that dynamic, all right? And a minute ago, we didn't see those nine squares. We didn't see that square as, an, as a dynamic, as an entity. And when you learn to see the whole system, that's what you start looking for. It's not just the squares that are obvious, but the interconnections and how, they, how those interconnections produce something different than we thought. Did, just, uh, I hear some starting to take notes. Did you all get the copy of the deck of slides that I sent out? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So, okay. And, this, Last times and this right. times, Dave sent me. Right. Not everything got on. You told me this. Well, day, but. cartoons and and uh, pictures, because the, the file sometimes gets really big to try to transmit. So I, I cut out all some the good of stuff is not there. But yeah, the, the <laughs> cartoons are copyrighted. I, I can use them on this, but I can't give them to you. So that's that's part of the limitation that we have. Okay. So point number one from last time was when you look at the organization as a system. You can't just look at the obvious things that are in your face, but you have to look a little deeper and see how things are connected to one another, right? The other point we had, I, uh, we had a video, and I have another one today, but it's not the same one. Let's see what you think of this one. This illustrates another point, so let's, uh, let's uh, go through this one. How, how does this connect with what we did last time? It's it's cause and effect. Cause and effect. Tell me your name again. Doug. Doug. Okay. Cause and effect. So we have all these dynamics going on, and one square may be influencing another square, which influences the third square, which actually produces a result in the fourth square. And you have to understand the cause and effect relationship of all this stuff that's going on. All right. Now we have a process today we're going to go through which does all of that, and we're gonna we're gonna have some fun with it. Okay, uh, and here's the model that we introduced last week, the organizational systems model, which is a way of, in my lingo, turning those 16 squares into 30 squares and also understanding cause and effect relationships. And that's what we're going to test uh, today. Uh, any 
here's the model we use for diagnosis. One of the things we're doing now, we're looking at all the elements of the organization, we're looking at cause and effect, and we're getting down to root causes of the things that we're concerned about and trying to change and improve. So, and here's our, our diagnosis process using the model. I hope you've had a chance to look through the article on it. Um, and uh, again, just coming back to what we did last time, which box, if you really want to know absolutely how well the organization is performing today, which box do you start in? Stakeholder needs. Stakeholder needs, vote and why? Because if you don't, that tells you what your organization is trying to do or what it should be doing. What it should be doing if it wants to make money and stay in business. Remember, the stakeholders are your voters. You win their vote, you stay in business. You lose their vote, somebody else gets rich while you start to suffer. Okay? So we start there to find out what is it that they want us to do. And then step one here says, how well are we delivering against those expectations? Okay? And stakeholders are, it can be senior management, it can be owners, it can be shareholders, it could be uh, suppliers, it could be customers, it can be communities, it can be governments. So in the broadest sense, whose vote do we need to have to keep to stay in business and to grow? All those kinds of things. Okay, so step one, here's what they need, here's what we're delivering. Some are good, some are not so good, and now we start our Jefferson Memorial Trek. Why? Why, why, why? Five whys. Results are why? They're driven by culture. Somebody remind us of what culture is. Chris? It's like the actual behaviors that people are carrying out day to day that make up the, the way they work. Okay, okay, the actual behaviors and, uh, it's, whoops, okay, all right. Um, just a second, yeah. Observable work habits and practices. There you go. It's like how things get done. It's how things get done. Good, good way to describe it, how things get done. All right, and <clears throat> how things get done determines the results that we get. You'd be amazed at a number of very intelligent senior executives who have never thought about that connection before. Our results come from how things actually get done. When you say that, they go, oh, yeah. But they would never come to that conclusion on their own. Most of them would not. Please. So uh, I like the distinction in the, the write-up of observable actions and observable habits because I think we all have an ideal of what we want our culture to be and what we think our culture is. But when the consultant can come in and see how things get done, I think that's when you really can make a change. Okay. This is one of the things, when you come into a client organization, this is one of the things that you offer. Because you're not clouded by their history, their tradition, and their, their value system that says this is okay and this is just the way it is. You can see some of those things. Those are some of those blind spots. So it's a great, it's a great ally that you have as you come in to work with them. Okay. All right. Uh, so then the question is, uh, like our, uh, like our Jefferson Memorial. Well, why are people behaving this way? Especially if those behaviors are giving us the wrong results. Because again, remember our tagline: all organizations are perfectly designed to get the results they get. So there's a logic in all of this. And if it's, if it's the wrong results that we're looking at, the logic is a negative logic. It's, it's producing the wrong stuff. Now we've got to, but we have to understand what that is before we can change it. So the, the culture, our next question is, why are people behaving that way? We've got four systems that are in action here. Our work processes, our structure, that is how we divide work, how we connect it up, the different parts of it. Uh, we have support systems like reward systems, like decision-making systems, like information systems. And we have the leadership and the organizational capabilities that we have in the, in the company. Uh, some companies are very fast at what they do as an organization. Something happens in the market, they can respond faster than anybody else. All right? Some organizations collaborate very well. Part of their structure is, yeah, they've got organizational functions and business units, but if they need to, those groups can work to cross the boundaries with each other and really get a lot done with high, high quality and with less time. So those are some organizational capabilities. Whatever those are, are leading to those observable behaviors. And so we start to trace that. So you see the cause and effect <coughs> relationship here. 
Well, then the question is, well, why are these systems good or bad? How did they grow up this way? How did they develop into what they are today? Is there some connection with our formal strategy? Is there some connection with our formal strategy that explains how we've done this? For example, our threat, I'm sorry, question? So is this model different than the one that was in the meeting? Because, no. Because it says performance organization people and information in the reading that you must charge your offices. Uh, you, you must have gotten the old copy of the article. Well, there's design and diagnosis, and they're a little bit different. Well, those are they're different in terms of the arrows, but in terms of the boxes, the boxes are the same. Yeah, the strategy and regret capabilities okay. are one. They must yeah, have last year's. Year's. They have. I, I yeah. thought I sent you the newest one. I, I'm, that's my fault. I'm sorry. Leaders and leadership is down below. Right. Is that in the article that you've got? Yeah. yeah. Leaders and leadership is in that article. Yeah, but it's like it's not the part of the. Oh, I see. Okay, so no, you've got last year's article. I apologize. <laughs> could be that I put the wrong one on. It's <laughs> working. Okay. okay. Sorry. Like sorry for the confusion. Engine. Thank you for. for yeah. Um, you, you'll find if you take the old model and the new one, everything in the old model is here. What we wanted to accent here was we felt leadership needed to be, it is in fact a system that drives a lot of behavior. And so we, we wanted it in there rather than as a foundational point. So anyway, sorry. We have the updated version. We'll make sure that you get that one as well. All right. Okay, so uh, systems are caused possibly by strategy. Uh, frankly, if it's a negative trend that we're on, poor results, dysfunctional behaviors, systems that are promoting their own thing, and when we come to strategy, we don't find a lot of connections between those and the strategy that we're after. And so, but something's got to be causing them. We've got to get to the root, and so if it's not strategy, then we come to underlying values and beliefs. What do people have in their heads? And uh, uh, one of the saddest examples of this was uh, probably none of you even re were alive when People Express started their business. You remember People Express, Alan. People Express was the first company in the U.S. to earn a billion dollars within its first five years of existence. It was, it was the forerunner of the budget airlines. And it was phenomenal. And they had a great profit sharing plan with the employees. They had a lot of stuff that we organizational designers thought was really neat stuff. They were doing, and they were very successful. But their CEO, Donald Burr, had a value, a belief, that businesses are complex anytime you get over six people, and you don't have to worry about complexity. And so he started drastically moving away from the or from his business model, which was regional airlines, low-cost air terminals, one airplane so that the maintenance and everything was uniform and easy to manage. He bought Frontier Airlines with multiple different airplanes, different routes. He started going international, not just regional. And uh, at the peak of their disaster, People Express was losing, losing 1,400 bags a month. <laughs> now, you could fly from here to Houston for $50. Yeah. But, but, your, but your, bag, your, your bag was worth more than the $50. So they earned a, a billion dollars in their first five years, and a year and a half later, they were out of business. Okay? They were overwhelmed by the complexity. But the CEO, despite board members saying, hey, we've got to slow down and get the, oh, no, no, no. Complexity is, it's overrated. We can handle it. Brought down the company, okay? Employee perk. So sometimes the underlying values and beliefs are actually more controlling than the strategy. And that's one of the things that you're looking for as we go through the diagnosis. Please, Marina. Um, how different, or are underlying values and beliefs that they included in culture, or are they different? No, they're not included in culture. In, in culture, remember, remember the fly in the wall from last time? The fly in the wall sees only the behaviors. Underlying values and beliefs are part of culture in the academic sense, in the full definition. They're part of my view of culture. Right. He's trying to separate them, so this, we look at them separately. This is cause and effect. <laughs> the, the values and beliefs drive the behaviors, but it's cause and effect. That's why we separated it. Okay. 
And I, did I mention, I, I had a conversation with Edgar Schein, and, and we went through this, and he said, okay, I understand you got it. He says, all right, I can support it. I had to get his support, and my book wouldn't get published, so we, we had to have the conversation. Okay? But it's cause and effect. Just, just think of that. They're both elements of culture, and I would be the first to agree with Schein and with Alan that values and beliefs are the main component of culture. Okay? But, the, but the behaviors are easier to spot, so in our diagnosis, we start there because that's easier to identify, and then you trace through, uh, as we'll see as we go through this. Dave has really come up with a nice way of doing this. Before, when I would talk to executives and say the real power in culture is what you, don't, what you take for granted, what you don't see, it's the underlying values and beliefs they are controlling. And it was really hard for them to get a hold of that, but I can't see it then. And, I, you know, how do we, and so what Dave does is, no, here's what you can see, talk about what you can see, and then ask yourself the question why. Now we have something concrete to talk about, and we can say, oh, it turns out, it's the, here's how they see the world. And it turns out people can describe our behavior, and we can do that too. So it really, this actually simplifies the diagnosis process, makes it manageable, makes it something they can talk about. And the other was harder, so this is a really nice And And, and these approach. same managers that couldn't see the 30 squares in the beginning and have no clue what underlying values and beliefs are, when we take them through this process, they nail the underlying values and beliefs every time. Yeah. They nail them cold. And they're, and they're and they're surprised and they're surprised and they're surprised that they hold these values and beliefs as much as anybody in the system so they've met the enemy and the enemy is in fact them and they, they recognize that it's very it has a very profound effect on what's going the on. other thing that's going on here I want to just emphasize is that Dave is not just doing this to them we talked just a minute ago about you coming in as consultants and being able to see things they couldn't see what you're doing here is not delivering a diagnosis you're helping them come up with insights that they can see. And it is a key difference uh, that, that, that you're helping them think through and get to surprises means they've now bought it. They're not just trusting you uh, and you know, this is some outsider who doesn't really know our culture. This is an aha that we got and now they're committed to it. It is a major <coughs> difference in this approach. Hard to get people to spend this much time. I mean, there, there are some issues here. But th th there's something going on here that's quite unique. You ought to, I hope you'll see, I hope you'll pay attention to it. Well, that's exactly the process we're going to simulate in just a couple of minutes. You're going to see how we do this with clients, and you're going to be the guinea pigs. You're going to be, you're going to be role playing members of the Great Grain cereal plant. And we're going to go through all the process. Okay. All right, so let me see what we got. In fact, we're going to do that now. So, right on time. Okay. Um, I need six volunteers to be employees of the Great Grains plant. Could, could right. I just say something as he gets started? This is going to look deadly dull to you. Uh, for a while. There's going to be some down stuff. They're going to be writing stuff, and he's going to be asking them questions, and they're going to be doing some stuff. That what what I want you to focus on. Charlie wanted to come up and take their, the face of their, you know, pictures of their face. What you're looking at is, how am I going to do what Dave does? And if you'll take, if you'll write down, sort of, why did he do that? And and re, and ask him along the way. I mean, there'll be some times when we'll do time out. If you'll spend some time thinking about what would I do next? What are the questions he's asking, and to get them when they're not getting it? What are the questions he's asking? Because this is you, you know. Not next week, but the following week, we're going to actually have you do it, and then after that, you're going to do it with a client. So pay a lot of attention and ask yourself questions and be willing to ask him questions, and, uh, it, it, and it will make a whole lot of difference in what you're getting out of this as the fishbowl watchers. So like with this, should we take notes on sort of how to elicit, or should we take specific notes on this case? I do the I do the process. The, the sort of I, I would recommend you, you make notes and question marks about the process. Right. Okay. okay? So that you that you feel prepared if if the case is to do this yourself with your group. Okay. All right. Everybody all set. Okay. So now, uh, first thing when we when we do this, even with multi million dollar multi billion dollar companies. We've done global redesigns, we've done regional redesigns, we've done business unit redesigns, we've done functional redesigns. We always start with the stakeholder needs, right? And we always uh, start off 
we usually get the diagnosis done in a day, eight hours, usually less than eight hours. But there are a couple of uh, items that have to go in it. There has to be some pre-work that's done before you get the group together in the room. One of the things that we like to do for pre-work, I always put my remote. Right here. Where? Oh, oh, how did it get, oh, well, that's because I was, anyway, thank you. I need to get one of those chains and hang around my neck. My dog, my dog called me. All right. So one of the things that we do as pre-work before you get the group together is you fill in the top two boxes. And so for this case, we're going to make it, we have, we have limited time, so we're only going to work on one issue. There are a lot in the case that you read. We're only going to look at one issue, and, one, and that issue is on the engagement score of the Global Opinion Survey, they were aiming at this plant for a 90% score. What does engagement mean? Engagement is how employees are uh, motivated, uh, compelled, uh, driven to do the job right, to get the right things done. Okay? Uh, versus apathetic, versus going through the motions, versus just coming in, putting in your time, and then going home. And that's when life gets interesting. Does it have to do with opinions about, am I involved? Do I understand the outcomes? Yes. Do I care about them? All, all of those things affect engagement. So it's okay? a measure of culture? It's a measure of culture, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a behavior, and there are a number of things that lead into that, yes. Okay? So, they were hoping for a 90% score, so there were a lot of questions on their opinion survey about how included do you feel, how respected are you by your manager, how, how uh, clearly do you see what you're doing relates to something important in the company, things like that. And they were hoping for a 90% score, and they only got a 76% score. And that's in the case that you, that you read. All right? So all we're going to look at is, why is it 76 and not 90? Okay. For those so, who aren't, I'm going to keep pushing a little bit please. today because there are some in the room, some of these folks have been, are HR people and worked in HR and know what engagement looks like. The, and the question is, so what? Why, why would we focus on this? Why would we care that there's a 76% versus 90%? I hope that we will have a chance at the end, we should be able to answer yeah, that yeah. question. I think we should be able to answer that question as we go through. Okay? All right. Okay. So. Simulating what we do in real life, I filled, we filled in the first two boxes before we bring our illustrious design team to come in and now diagnose what's going on. So the question that we start off with is why? Why are these behaviors, why, why are these results the way they are? What are people doing? What's the behavior that, that explains why we have 76% and not 90%? All right? And so anyway, we're going to... You've seen the, uh, the fly on the wall, right? And remember, that's what we're looking at when we come to this box, all right? So let me come back, take a few minutes, go through the case. Now in real life, this is all in your head because you live it every day. You don't need a case, but in our case, we're gonna use the case. Uh, use your worksheet. I would recommend using the worksheet, right in the culture box, all right. Any examples of behaviors that you see that explain why engagement is 76% and not 90? Once you've kind of worked through that and got your thoughts together, pick your five most impactful behaviors that you think most describe why it's a lower number than we were after. Write each of those five on your post-it and put it up on the whiteboard. I'm going to move the whiteboard to center stage here. Okay? So, individually, because the idea here is each of you has your own perspective on it. That's what we want. We want your perspective to come forward. We're going to look at everybody's perspectives. We're going to see what themes there are and get the, the uh, 30 pieces of paper down to a handful of behaviors that we can then focus on. All right? I'm going to move some metaphor. They can start to get into that. What does the fly see happening that logically explains 76% instead of 90%. Okay? You find, you find they're often able to identify others' behaviors pretty well, and so having a cross section can help to get at each. See, section. each person in the organization will see some things the same. They'll, they'll all see some of the same things, but they'll also see a few things that may be different but critical. And so as we get all those up here, then we'll start to see which ones 
make the most difference to the result that we're looking at, and that helps us move forward. Sure. I don't know if you already set this up in the scene, but are these employees at different tiers in the organization? Yes. Or they all yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Now, for our purposes here, they're all reading the same case, and so it's going to be a little more homogenous. But frankly, in, in many companies, you don't see much difference in what people write down on these post-its from different levels in the organization. It tends to be more different areas, and they may see something more or less than in other areas. But. So will you also observe and compare what they've said to what you've seen, or is that usually not part of the process? Uh, always, yes. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever started by questioning the stakeholder needs? and Like, have you ever gone in and be like, these needs seem really unusual, or? Or do you always start with results? We, we often start by interviewing different members of the organization. Just, and I'll, I'll show you some of the questions that we ask there. We, we do some interviews up front sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. And that gives us a feel for some of the stuff that's going on. And then uh, we may have a chance to observe some things happening in the organization. And then uh, that, that is kind of grist for the mill as we then facilitate. But a lot of what we're doing, Beth, is we're looking for the logic. Because if people have some negative things lining up, le leading to the wrong results, and then we get to like the underlying values and beliefs, gee, we just can't think of anything. Then, then the logic of the flow says, well, nothing comes from nothing, folks. You've outlined some pretty specific things that are working against you, and none of that's connected to the strategy as you've just analyzed. Something's going on. What is it? You've got you to tell me what is logically explaining this connection. We'll, I'll, we'll go through that when we get to this step here. But, yeah, it's helpful. But you do, as a consultant, internal, external, you do some of the interviews, but you also have a team of internal people doing the questioning too. So for our guinea pigs, let me encourage so you to write big they have to have and put each point, very, each of your five on a separate post. So you want I want five so posts for each of you up here on the board. What? There is their insight team that's really cooperation Just what the fly can see. Um, a behavioral example of what the fly sees. And when you put them up, don't worry where you put them because we're gonna mess around with you. Very mean. Yeah, your team is shut down. Yeah, because they want to keep their job. So you have to. When you put this team together, and your um, people gathering. Yeah. yeah. Can you see what Dave is doing right now? Marina's just asked a question, and she says, I've got, she's got frustration down there, I guess. Yeah, she had frustration. Did, did you I hear what her, Dave said? What does the fly see when people are frustrated? Mm -hmm. What is it that so they, they see? What do they use? What's the concrete? What, do they, what are they demonstrating? What are they critical? Yeah. What are they saying? What are they doing? How frustrated, do they might. Know? That's not sure. How do you know they're frustrated? There you go. Well, yeah, exactly. That's and so, that, and that, you, you're, you know, when you say frustrated, you're almost reading their mind. And I'm just trying to get them onto what are the behaviors. So do they do they stand around with their hands in the air saying, somebody help me? Or, or do they say, somebody come and, and fix this mess? Or, I mean, what is it that they do that you would interpret as frustration? Okay? Because this, remember, this box is all about the fly, what the fly can see or hear, or what the fly never sees or never hears. Okay? Can you see that why that's an important distinction? Mm -hmm. If it's your interpretation, then this is not as useful as, here's how they actually behave. That's what you're trying to focus on. That works. Okay. That works. And behaviors are facts. So you can have agreement around facts. Well, at least you can all say, we, do we see this together, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and you'll see when we come together with this group, because the more we have behaviors there, the easier it's going to be to see that some things are similar, I'm really describing the same thing in slightly different words, or they stand by themselves, and then we can decide what to do from that point. They might be slightly different words, but they're really describing the same phenomenon. So we want you to group those together without talking, and if somebody moves one of your items into a category that you don't think it belongs there, you can move it back, and if they don't like it, they can move it back, and if you don't like it, you can move it back. Sooner or later, every, everything finds a place, 
And some items don't necessarily group with anything else. It's okay. There's no law that says they all have to fit into a category. But we're looking for genuinely interest areas of commonality of these statements. So without speaking, and anybody, anybody is free to do what you want, group the ones together that, that you think belong together. So slap fights are allowed. No, yeah. <laughs> Just as long as you don't talk. <laughs> No lasting marks. <laughs> Notice how quickly they move to the action. Disciplined group. Mm -hmm. Some people have a have an impossible time not talking in this yeah. first day. Great question. By the way, my name is Dave. I'm not a professor. <laughs> when, when, they, when they can't talk, they have to read what everybody has said. They have to canvas all of them. They have to personally get exposed to everything that's up there rather than dog it. Boxing gloves ever to work out there. No. I already have one. No. <laughs> <laughs> she's already heard. She's already worked out this morning with the boxing gloves. <laughs> okay. I tell you what. Again, in the interest of time, <coughs> would you let this go on for a while? Usually. Uh, this this stage. I don't get worried if this takes us an hour from the writing down to the board to the finish. I don't get nervous if it takes an hour to do that. Because this is really critical stuff. But I, I am going to push this down. So, okay, so freeze, stop. Okay, yeah. I haven't looked closely at the board. There are probably going to be somewhere between six and seven clusters. So let's see numerically how that plays out and then let's see what the content is. Because now, stage two, first of all, let's just count. So, I, I, tell me what else is <laughs> This is kind of the amoeba. Is this one or two? That's a hybrid. I think it's one. It's I'm one, it's two, one. I think it's three, four, five, six. Seven. Seven. Duh. How do I know that? After hundreds of these, you give people five to six votes each. I don't care if there are 15 or 20 people or six people. You're going to end up with about six or seven clusters. Now we're going to summarize those into one phrase for each cluster. Okay? Now you can talk. And the, and the discussion should be, what's the message of, of each of these clusters? And how do we summarize that in one phrase that the fly in the wall and see, because uh, 
I, I help coach people, and, and people always need coaching on this when we start, but I don't take time to make sure that every one of these 30 is a perfect statement of a behavioral fly on the wall statement. But when we come to the themes, that's where I get kind of tough. So just not wanting to pick on anybody. Um, Actually, a lot of these are quite good. <laughs> okay. Okay. This one I pick on a little bit. Employees doubt Lean's ability to save money. So. It's word for word quote. From employee. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Well, if you want to put it in quotes, okay. But but the question is, if they doubt it, how does that affect what they do? They may have said it, I grant you they said it, but what is it that they do with that doubt in their mind? Do they not attend the training class? Do they attend the training class, but they never dirty their hands with it after that? What, what is, what, do we, what's actually going on? So that's where I would, I would pick a little on, just as an example. Actually, a lot of these are quite good. I mean, shut down, we all know what shut down means. You know, you're, you're just, you're just okay, fine. If that's it, boss, fine, okay. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do next. But we, we shut down. The creativity is gone, and we're going through the motions. Okay? So, all right. So, please, if you would, give us, and if we need to write a new post-it with the theme, that's fine. But let's put a theme statement that's a behavioral statement for each of these clusters. Can you just write on the board? Uh, I prefer to do it on a post-it because we're going to move those to one side and we're going to use the board again for the next round. So now it's your discussion. What are these saying to us and how do you want to summarize that into one statement? Oh, right. Let's start at the top. I think the manager's half of the time is pretty descriptive. But it is it a behavior though? I mean, is it a, is it a result of the behavior? Because say, I think we're trying to like come up with a result of the behavior. Like, what does it entice people to do as a result of managers having no time? So people don't talk to, people don't seek out their managers because they can't get an audience. So like, they're ignoring the authority, or? They just, it's a they, they, don't, they don't bother, they, they don't bother communicating with them because they can't ever sit them down. I don't know, I think there's a couple different this is where I get lost. There's a couple different behaviors. The managers are obviously having behavior. They're not on the floor. They're spending a ton of time on a ton of different things. So what's causing that behavior? But then there's a lack of communication between managers and techs. Which what's causing that behavior? Which comes down so for that, could you just raise that level and say that it has to do with the structure? Doesn't allow for communication. In I don't know if the structure. I, I wonder if it's... I mean, structure of the work, structure, work structure, structure of the work. We, we, you may come to a conclusion about structure when you move into the systems, because structure is one of those systems. Yeah. Right now, we're just looking at what is the behavior. Okay? And so if I look at these three, technicians can't find time to meet with managers. Managers don't have time to be on the floor. They're overbooked with urgent priorities. Managers have no time. Okay. And uh, Mar Marina is asking a good question. Okay, uh, managers have no time. How does that affect behavior of others, or how does what, what's the impact of that? And maybe it's just that managers just don't communicate with other people. Or managers aren't engaged. So lack of communication. So give us a fly in the wall statement. I'm sorry, Marina. What what is it? Lack of communication is that. Managers are not meeting with line employees. Right. But that's not the behavior that they. That is that's good. not that's the behavior that's that it good. results in. We're talking about is it like not? how does yeah, it affect. Yeah, they don't have time, so they're not meeting with people. That's what yeah, the, the fly does not see managers meeting with. It. Okay. Yeah, you can put it both ways, though, too, because it's the technicians can't find time either. You could say technicians and managers are not communicating. Yeah, that's the behavior. So what's our role? I think it's a, it's a, it's a lack of engagement well, between yeah, managers the, and all of these. These two parties are not, these right. two circles do not intersect. You know, the, the employee piece and the manager piece. Right, no, there's, so the reason I brought so that was just to say that there are, it's both sides. Yeah. Yes. yeah, it's not just managers. Not doing it. So managers and techs are disconnected or something like that. Okay. okay. Communication can be very general. You can just in the plant, 
Uh, Arthur Management doesn't share the business reality with employees. Managers are required to implement multiple urgent initiatives. Training was given to a few of the day shift employees. Heavy emphasis in lean is on training programs, the telephone game, text not asked about <coughs> management initiatives. This is like a miscellaneous uh, It's, it's, it's like, like not, this one goes there. <laughs> yeah, they don't even know. Yeah. So managers are required to implement multiple urgent priorities. I feel like that went with yeah, the yeah, disconnected. That leads to the disconnected. Yeah. Okay? Now, this is very interesting. This is not unusual. In the silent period, there are some loose ends. As we talk about it, and then they come back to these, they say, oh, well, you know, that one really actually goes in here. And now that we've clarified some of these, this one goes over here, this one goes over here. So anyway. Well, this one goes also here. Too, yeah. 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 Okay. So then what happens when we get a little clearer? And then this one, employee don't understand what's going on. Could yeah. be the... I think the we top plans don't change behavior because they. they right, but I think that. No, yeah, you're right. I, I think the top two could be its own, and the bottom at least could be their own. Because the top is more about what is management actually like. This is like the vision. Mm -hmm. What vision is actually being shared? It doesn't look like anything is, and that's where I think the telephone game may go up mm -hmm. there. Um, but then the bottom one, and these are both mine. Um, <laughs> I looked at that is that they're focusing so much on training, so basically there's a problem with execution. So I don't know if that fits anywhere else, but they're not, no one cares because like if three of ten people are getting the training, who cares, right? No one's going to know. So, and, and, and the whole emphasis is on training. So these three you're saying would go up here? Mm, you know, I actually, uh, I, I see a, all, this, I think yeah. this neck between senior management and manager, like line managers, because they're just, Line, it seems like line managers are just trying to do stuff to keep up with all these new programs. Where I, like this is the vision. I think that's kind of like the vision. It's not getting to the bottom. Line. You know, I was actually Bingham's article last year or something about a line, 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 yeah, line, line, line of sight. sight. I actually see that's line of sight. I actually see all of these being as part of here. It's information not getting from the people who have it to the people who need it. But the telephone game is miscommunication, right? So it's disconnected. I didn't telephone game. I, I, could, just, I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. But this may be a subset of this. Like this could be. This looks like it could be its own problem. Does have to fit. In well, I see. I always, I'm always asking them what they think needs to happen with this. So I said, I thought somebody said these go up here. Yeah. I asked the question. So are you saying these go up here? No, we think this is a separate issue. It's related to the lack of connection, but it's important enough that we think it should be its own. So that's what's going to happen. So we have. The vision is not getting from the top to the bottom. Okay? I can buy that. I don't know what you were talking about. So would the training stuff fit inside? Like the new plans don't change behavior? I think so. Like you, you train, yeah. you train, you train, yeah. but it's not going to change the behavior. It's a new plan. But if they don't buy into it, yep. nothing's going to change. Jay, we're wasting like it. Done. Does that work? Yeah. Yep. No, I think it, I mean, it okay. the same thing. Okay. All right. Well, again, the discussion helps sharpen what uh, what these are, and coincidentally, my perfect record remains intact. Either six or seven behaviors at the end of the day. Okay. All right. Uh, very good. Uh, question. We need to take a short break. Thank you. Yes. Do that. All right. Okay. Group. Now. On our worksheet, we're going to put in the worksheet. We just did step number two. Step number three, we're going to the systems. What are the systems that make these behaviors logical? And I'd like to drum this through with people. The system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets. The connections of cause and effect are entirely logical. So given these behaviors, what's going on in these four systems that makes the behaviors logical? And why would you expect anything else? Dave, what I hear you saying is logical to the people who are behaving this way. Right. That is for them, this right. makes sense to do right. this, well, given the system. It's, e it's even more insidious than that, Alan. They probably aren't even aware of the logic. But it's playing out as 100%. In other words, yeah. yeah. It's rational for somebody in this system to to behave this way. Yeah. In, in fact, that's what some of the ahas are. Gee, I didn't realize that 
that this dysfunctional thing was happening to this dysfunctional thing. I just thought this was how we do things around here. Okay? All right. So now, what I'd like to ask you to do, use your notepad for a few minutes, because we're only going to give you five votes on the systems. Okay? We usually go with more, but only five. And make some notes in the four systems that explain to you why these behaviors, these seven that we have, why these behaviors are what's causing these behaviors. When you say four systems, you're talking about structure. not just systems. systems the systems, the, the process, the structure, gotcha. and the leadership and capabilities. Any of those four. And the questions in the worksheets are just to kind of trigger your thinking to see what kinds of things might go in here. So when you said the question, what are the systems that make these behaviors logical, you meant like what are the, or the leadership capabilities, or the structure, or the process, right. all of that stuff, right. what are all of right. Okay. right. And again, I use the questions in each box to kind of guide me through what, what people are looking at there. Okay. So take a few minutes, make your notes, and then uh, put your five post-its up on the wall, please. Are those of you who are watching doing the same thing? You've read the case, or are you trying to write down what you think, too? Yeah. And one other footnote, uh, Brandon Bennett, who's not with us, he's back uh, interviewing today with a potential employer. Uh, Brandon was part of this task force that did, this, that did the case study. And uh, next week, he'll be back, and he'll give you the rest of the story in terms of what the, the group actually um, uh, recommended and how that's been played out. Okay, yeah. I work. Whatever helps. I work with associations. <laughs> it would help if you had a little peanut butter on your nose and I could remember. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we're looking at this as are we also looking at behaviors of like some leadership? These are not necessarily behaviors, they are systems, processes. <clears throat> Things in these four areas. For example, we talked about uh, managers and techs are not are, are disconnected. Is that a structural problem? Does the structure prevent them from getting together, or is there something else that's going on? So we're moving. So just a thought. We're kind of moving away from observable behavior. Yep. So like the more scientific, this is what we're seeing. To we're making some assumptions. No, we're describing systems or processes or reward systems or, or capabilities that are explaining why these behaviors are going on. Sure. Um, uh, yes, in terms of leadership and capabilities. The process text can't solve many equipment issues. What are the training or development issues that make that logical? that make that situation logical. Okay. So, for example, there's no hands-on training for those kinds of problems. People aren't getting any real relevant training on those kinds of problems. Therefore, they can't solve the problems. Okay. Does that make sense? Is that logical? <clears throat> sure. The more serious issue is the lack of progress on lean, and the two are are connected. And so, what our group did with the, with the whole um, engagement process also gave the plant significant insight into what they needed to do to make lean more effective. Another way to frame what what they're doing right now is answering the why question. We're answering the why, why these behaviors. Why those behaviors. Why, what are the systems that are causing these behaviors to emerge? And again, when we talk about these behaviors, this is what most of the people do most of the time. These are characteristic of what most people do most of the time. And that, that's what drives the results that we get. This question with full confidence that that's the answer, or with theories on this could be the answer that's big into a little bit more. What we're doing right now, CJ, is looking at are there any potential connections here? And so, if you see something in a, for example, rewards, if you 
if your suspicion is that people are rewarded for just taking care of their own department stuff. <clears throat> and in real life, you'd have some evidence to that effect, okay? From the case study, is there anything in the case that you see that makes the point? Then it's okay to put it up there, okay? And then we'll see what what the themes are as we as we emerge here. It's kind of like a murder mystery. We're trying to find out who's done it. We're looking at each box to see is there a connection between this box and these behaviors that we've got identified. Well, we need some more data. We need to find out how it really works. We need some evidence of what's going on here. Where, where are you? Do time out on this and go gather that. Usually the people in the room, because they're experienced enough in the system, have they've got answer. ample evidence that these are, are real issues. The, so issue, the real issue is connecting them. Having the them real issue is getting them out there and seeing how they're connecting with the other stuff that's going on. That's the main challenge. Process, structure, systems, you left the questions on the... Uh, yeah, sheet here to find that. In a perfect world, we would have probably had a short mini seminar going through all of that before we ever got to this point. So we didn't do that with these folks, but these folks are well, they're bright, brilliant, above the average. But you, know. you may want to be thinking about how you would right. help See, people. You you will have to take a client group through that. You'll have to do, and yeah. So the article. That you have, that's something you can give them to read. You can discuss with them. You have some slides from Dave. You've got the slides that I'll we can, that you can use. Yeah, the fly on the wall piece. And I'm not sure on system structures that are even have slides for. Uh, uh, maybe some, uh, not, not at this point. No. But they do have to work. Not only to save time, but also to reduce complexity. Think about if we had a group of 15 people and they each had 12 post-its they could put up here. You've got a whole wall full of post-its and it it's, can be overwhelming. So we're going to break up. I'm going to ask you to work in teams of two. And each, each team of two takes one of the four. And I'm going to ask two from our fishbowl, our audience, to come up and help us in the one that the three groups here don't want to take. So who's going to work with whom and which one do you want to take? Okay, which one do you want to take, guys? We'll take leadership. Leadership, okay. All right. Who else is going to work together? Systems. There, ladies. Structure is fine, okay. So I'd like two volunteers to come and do process. Gentlemen, please. Come on down. Okay. Now, do we trust these guys as members of our team? All right, so come up. We're going to do the same thing. You and your partner decide how you want to do it, but let's, let's, now, you don't have to have themes. If, for example, let's just pick, let's just say that nothing in the process area overlaps and becomes a theme. But as you, as you understand the case, each of these is a legitimate point. They can all stand there. What I'm trying to do as we work through this model is have nothing more than 10 items in any box. So even if we have two, four, even if we have all six of these as individual items in a process, that's okay. That's okay as we look in the look at the grand scheme of things. We got all those uh, cultural behaviors down to seven. Now let's just see what makes sense. And if you think you need to do any wordsmithing to any of the individual post-its so that they are uh, clearer, feel free to do that. All right. Just to clarify, are we connecting them to these or are they no. not? No. Well, they should, you should be satisfied that these, in fact, do connect with these behaviors. But you don't have to be explicit about that. Just, just look mm -hmm. over and see if it makes sense. If you see something that you don't think fits here, put it off to the side. Are we allowed to shift between categories if we disagree? If you see content, you know, somebody might have called it structured, the other person yeah. might have called it system. If that's the case, then you can swap. You can swap. Okay, please. The actual yeah, consulting, would the whole group do it all? all? Yes. Um, you wouldn't divide and conquer. No, no, I would divide and conquer. And yeah. then you brought in another group, but you wouldn't do that? Really? No, 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 no. We would have enough people to, to do that. Just divide and conquer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. First of all, you got a lot, typically you'll have a lot more post-its on the wall. And so 
you, you take it in bite-sized chunks. Uh, everybody now, notice everybody is involved in this step rather than some people sitting back. Again, if you've got, sometimes we have 12 or 15 people in the group, and if we, if we do 12 items here, you've got a lot of uh, paper on the wall. And some people sit back and three or four people are going like crazy trying to get over that. So this way we get everybody on. Plus it, it makes this go faster. Do you try to get them broken up by different disciplines or departments? Not necessarily. It's really, it's just a concept an issue of uh, do we understand what's up there and since we've all done the culture step before we kind of have an idea of what, what it is we're aiming for. Yeah, I, 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 so I guess we'll we'll see what they come up with. Say. It's a very good question. Uh, yeah. this isn't a management on site, the, the biggest thing to be aware of is not, how easily disturbed will they be and distracted by an emergency. emergency. I gotta talk to her right now or I'll die. You know? Um, that's that's one. If the, if they so want to do it on site, I always ask. Okay, what's the, what's the culture like around here? How easy is it going to be for people to be distracted? And if it's a distraction, then let's go. Hey, coach, you have a similar problem. We've got off site with cell phones, with computers. Well, yeah. We what do you say about that? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're investing a day into the future of your company. And this goes back to our first point: that these are significant business issues that they're really wrestling with. And we're going to invest eight hours of a group of people's time to give you a real breakthrough on this issue that they've been struggling with. Isn't that worth putting some protection around so people can come? You'll have breaks along the way. You'll have lunch. You can take care of it. But that, that's Let's agree together whether you're going to take four right. hours. Right. I always, I always have a book a day for it, even though we probably won't take it until we have that one. I always book it for no case. Yes. Do you want us to uh, have uh, overall? Thing? That's one of the things you've got to be careful about as you are organizing this. What's the culture like from lower levels interacting with higher levels on issues that might be painful? How easy is it for people to talk openly? Because if you're not able to talk openly, it doesn't matter what you put on the wall, it's garbage. Union management is another... Yeah, well, see, we had a, a Procter & Gamble plant. The HR manager did not want the union leadership to come to the diagnosis session. And I said, could the union be a block to any design changes that you're recommending? Oh, well, yeah. I said, how can you not have them in there? Well, because they they don't always agree with us. <laughs> Come on, folks. At the end of the at the end of the session where we did the diagnosis and then we did some design, part of what we found was that the most skilled technical people had moved away from the production lines into maintenance and technical specialty groups, day shift only, as described here, and they weren't available, and we were missing a lot. And and everybody in the group, including the union president, said. People have got to go back to the lines and on some kind of a regular basis. So we have those skills. They bought into it because they understood from the diagnosis how it was killing us. And the plant was going to get closed if they didn't have some dramatic improvements. Well, now the union president and the plant manager are just like this in going to the workforce to say, we've got to make some changes here. And the HR manager, with a very embarrassed face, said, boy, were you right. I said, you, so you pay me the bill. You can pay me now, you can pay me later. You know, you can pay the union now or pay them later, one way or the other. So, you know, I, I'm always, I always like to have, um, what's, the, what's the term? Uh, disruptive personalities, people that aren't afraid to call it like it is. I always like to have some of them in there. But I also find I, I want to find out if if they were to be open and honest, if that would be treated with respect, or if things would start to shut them down. If the things they describe in each of these areas, if you see a connection between what they describe and at least some of the behaviors that we have under culture. Dave, did you just do something with them to help them get to these categories? I just helped, I, I just worked with them on 
uh, which ones stand alone, which ones don't. They had a couple of items that all I did was ask a couple of questions and they agreed that goes under leadership and capabilities because it was about technical skills. Ah, and we you said, oh, that's maybe a training issue. Well, it is a process issue. See, any of the, uh, many of these items could fall under one or more buckets. The main thing is to get it in, uh, on the radar screen and then decide what to do with it. Rather, it, it's not worth uh, uh, arguing which category does it go into. The issue is, how does it get addressed? And it was, a, it was, they were. The way you solve the problem is a training, you train or something. Right, that, right. A capability. See, one of them was processing people and packaging people. The two processes aren't well connected. And if one goes down, the others stand around because they can't help. Well, that's a capability gap. What, what if you had the whole team of 24 that could move to the problem and get it solved? Okay, and the people could work on whichever part of the line, that's the way we did it at P&G, you could get those lines up really, really fast. So right now they don't have that capability and that was identified very well over here. And we said those really go in here. The others we said, anyway, we, I just helped them with the summary there. They had three items that were about the same thing. We just chose one. And, that's all I did. Tell. Do you have any questions about what he did? I'm just trying to make sure you see there's some facilitation going on that you didn't see. Okay. okay, let's have each group now summarize for us what you found. Listeners, do you see any connection between what they've said and the behaviors that we're looking for? Should we sit down so that Yeah, I think that would be better so you can see that. <laughs> Okay, who's up first? We are. Who's we? Leadership. Leadership, okay. And capabilities. And capabilities. So, so what, a, what did we find? There's an obvious capability gap in maintenance skills. Okay. We said that leadership is not communicating, and then we kind of had a bucket list, but either the vision or a need for change or the reality of the situation. Just in or all three. Together. Okay. And uh, that leadership does not have a clear understanding of, of how the work gets done on the floor and in the plant. Okay. Does that play out in any of this? Vision not getting from the top to the bottom? New plans don't change behaviors? That may yeah. Yeah. Um, the process get the job done as usual. Process text can't solve. Okay, people only help in their own department. Okay, uh, these processes not consistent. We've now got that under the, the capabilities part. The new plans don't change behaviors. Okay, so we'll anyway. Okay, so do these do these connect? No, you're looking at leadership. Oh, I'm sorry. Do these connect? Okay. Yes. We got that. We got that. We got that. All right. So now we're building the cause and effect connections. We've got the, the engagement score that's not what we wanted. We've got some behaviors that explain why the engagement is down. And now we, we know some leadership and capabilities issues that are contributing to the behaviors. So now systems group, enlighten us, please. Uh, output is rewarded over training or just about anything else. Okay. Uh, teams are not incentivized to help each other. Okay. Innovation and creativity are not rewarded. People are not encouraged to think. It's just do your job. Okay. Uh, management is the bottleneck for too much information and execution. Okay. So, in organizations, you get what you reward. Reward is not just money. When you said output is rewarded, is there a financial connection with that? It's. It's their job. It's what they're evaluated on. Okay. I mean, so getting the output, getting the stuff out the door is defined as doing a good job. Right. What happens to people in a system if they're perceived as not doing a good job? They get, they get pushed down to the grunt work or they get pushed out the door. So this may not have anything to do with money, but it's a very powerful incentive. Okay? Teams are not incentivized to help each other. Is there a financial penalty for helping somebody else? It doesn't necessarily mean they're disincentivized. They're just, there's nothing pushing them to do. Okay. And with this one going against this one, 
they will tend to only help their own department. See the connection we're starting to make? Okay. See how they're, it's starting to come together as you get these bits and pieces. You see they are aligning to show that we are perfectly designed to get to these. Yes, they were. They were just, no, am I? I may be confusing the case with another one of the readings. Was was this the one where there was the fire that people put out, and then there's like only authorized people can help put out fire? No, that's the no. precision instruments case. It will take up. Okay, yeah, that's okay. a different. Sorry, one. that's a different. That's okay. It's all right. Get my You're reading it right. right. There's a problem. <laughs> Innovation, creativity, not rewarded. People not encouraged to think. Again, this is one of those soft incentives. Okay. This is all about. Quite frankly, these are all elements of what management says is important, what management pays attention to, what management follows up on, what management takes a, a strong stand on. Management attention is one of the strongest incentives in the system, and it costs nothing to change it or improve it. Can, can I just help you see what Dave is just doing? Why is he summarizing this way? What is he, what is he ending up with and focusing on here? Can you tell why he's asking these questions? This is what you could do something about. He's trying to get to, so what is it? Is this an incentive system? Is this what is defined as a good job? Is this what management pays attention to? Because now that's the stuff, when you get done, you could say, okay, so what are you going to pay attention to management? What do you talk, how do you define a good job? What, what, so you, you, he's trying to get it, another, this is another level of getting concrete. Concrete about what is it in the system that is causing that behavior. So he's not just looking at the connection, yeah. he's looking at what is, the, what, what is it about that particular system? Is it a reward system? Is it, is it a, 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 the way managers talk? Is it where they spend their time? Is it what they pay attention to? Can you see what he's doing? He's trying to make it very concrete on actionable things that could change. You, you could do some formal things against those three statements around pay and performance assessment. And against this culture, it would have zero impact. You'd have a new form for performance appraisal time. You'd get to that point of, oh yeah, now what have you done to collaborate with others? Well, not anything, but I've got this out, and we did this, and we handled that project. Said, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, you know, four stars, five stars for you, even though you didn't do anything on that, even though there may have been a, a formal form change to recognize it. It wouldn't touch the culture. Okay, management is the bottleneck for too much information and execution. So the information system, there's this bottleneck, which is a very accurate description of what's going on. Okay. And we saw it over here again. All right, good stuff, good summaries. Structure. Oh, that's oh don't <laughs> be bashful. Um, so the top one we just talked about um, the hierarchy. The <coughs> here we've got an org chart. We've got headquarters, managers, workers, and we have the headquarters is not from the plan. The rest of the people are from the plan. So. Describe what, what was going on there. Um, so basically, the orders come from headquarters, and okay. they pass down to managers, and then managers pass those down to workers. The problem is that headquarters have no idea what it is like to work at the plant, nor what kind of products are being manufactured there. Okay. So um, basically, that aligns with um, get the job going to yeah, managers and techs are disconnected, um, and also new plans don't change in behaviors because people are not motivated to act upon something that they that they think headquarters don't want to see. They're so. cynical. They're they discount it. They're not gonna they're not gonna let it bother their daily routine. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Good. All right. All maintenance techs are on the day shift only. What's the problem with that? running 24 hours a day. And? So the process techs are having to do these makeshift repairs yeah. on the other two shifts. Okay. Which is leading to lack of efficiency. And then when the maintenance techs come on, it begins that type of cultural okay. rivalry between the different roles. And with that kind of reality, as we're moving to lean manufacturing, what are the prospects for improving how we operate with that in place? You're dead in the water before you ever try. 
okay? We, we just put our finger on a major issue around the major initiative that they're supposed to be delivering on. Okay, very good, very good. And structured in four separate teams. What are the four? Processing, packaging, yeah. uh, shipping. Shipping and materials handling. Yep. Okay, those four. Could you ever conceive of a situation on the third shift where people in those four areas might need to collaborate on some kind of emergency situation? But that's not the way we work, and that's not the way we are incentivized. So it's going against the grain. Okay? And then uh, there's a lot more that can go wrong in processing than other departments. Oh. So they're working on this lean manufacturing, but it seems like they're ignoring that there are a lot of issues in processing, and they aren't getting better. So it's creating okay. a, a bottleneck for everyone else. So we have a management bottleneck on information, and here we have a technological bottleneck on the equipment, the process of making the cereal. Okay? Does that play out into problems here? Because if we just continue to get that job done as usual, we're, again, the implications for lean manufacturing are rather dismal with this stuff. Now, and we don't have a big long list of things. We've got a few air items in each area that really need to be addressed. Okay? All right. Process group. All right, well, the, yeah. these are the guys from headquarters that came to help us. <laughs> okay, <laughs> gentlemen, no, it's okay. Don't, don't, don't sure back off or be bashful. <laughs> well, um, that first one was just about like, we kind of were cause and effect, we thought. Like, issues are being prioritized because of that. A lot of the resources are being kept for kind of like the one, top one or two priorities. And the bottom ones aren't really lasting longer because you don't have like resources or anything like that. Um, and then, just realize that probably by the book versus reality for could probably go over and that leadership does not have a clear understanding of how the work is getting done. But just that like, you know, they do things by the book, they talk about the lean manufacturing by the book. And, and but they don't really know like how things are actually being processed on the floor. And then no no formal transfer of knowledge or communication. There just isn't that formal, whether it's through trainings or, or just a kind of formal uh, channel. There's not the communication. So, if I may, I'm going to add yeah. this to this to this one because they really are saying the same thing. Okay. And so what we're left with here, I like the cause and effect, especially now. See, start to connect. <clears throat> Output is rewarded. Um, get the job done as usual. And now, what are the priorities? Why is it that all the priorities? I think this is a very insightful comment. Whoever did it. Congratulations. Anything that's longer than 12 months doesn't make the priority list. In reality, even though it may be sold as a priority, it's not treated as a priority. That's why they all go away. Because only the things that are here and now, that's what the culture is attuned to. Okay? That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Okay. And then no formal transfer of knowledge and communication because we're all too busy just getting the work done as usual, getting the outputs. That's what we're about. <clears throat> okay. What's Dave doing now, right now? Connecting all the. Can you can you see what he's doing? Could you do that? This is a skill that, that this is not easy to do. He's practiced this a lot, but it's the kind of thinking that makes all of this start to surface the connections, and. I hope you see the skill level that's going on here and that you start saying, okay, how am I going to think on your feet with issues that are just coming up, how do they connect? Uh, you should be shaking your boots just a little bit and saying, okay, how am I going to how am I going to get myself up to speed on that and practice this? And we're going to practice it some more. By we're going to practice it in two weeks. We're going to come in. I won't be here, but Mark Nyman, my colleague, who we work closely together, he's going to come in. You're going to have another round of some more casework only this time in your small groups, each of you will lead the process for one of the steps of diagnosis. So you'll start to get some facilitation experience with that uh, process, okay? But yeah, I'm trying to summarize and help people see, you know, 
some of these things now are going to jump out as bigger priorities than others as a result of going through this. And then we've got, we've got to start to do some things to chip away at this culture. Okay, now, we're, we're very, very short in time. I'm, I'm going to take us through the last two steps, three steps, very, very quickly. And then we'll have a few minutes of, of uh, kind of debrief. And then next week, when Brandon is with us, we'll kind of summarize this. In fact, I'm going to take these and, and put them up on the... We'll have, it on a, we'll have it on the screen so we can summarize for Brandon. And then Brandon's going to tell us what, their, uh, what the priorities were that they picked out and the recommendations. And he's also, he told me he's gone back to the plant to see what some of the follow-up is in the, in the previous year. And he'll give a report on what's happened there. So we'll have a chance to see what, what, how this really plays out. Okay, so now, go back to our worksheet. And those of you follow along with us. We've got, we've got the systems, and, and I would say this, that these are, are, every one of these points is very salient to what we're doing, and it's not an overwhelming list of things to start to work with, so. Uh, is it Emily? Emily, yeah. Emily please. Um, I just have a question, because as you're facilitating this, you know the case better than they do, which helps as you're saying, oh yeah, look at how these connect. But in a real situation, they know the case better than you do. Mm -hmm. um, how does that kind of change? Because the way you're walking through I'll, it is just a little bit different than... I'll tell you honestly, Emily, I'm not even thinking about the case right now. I am thinking about only what they have written up here. And I'm, what I'm thinking, what I'm, what I'm focusing on is, do these points connect with the behaviors? And do these make sense? And every one of these points has made sense. I'm focusing on the content of these, not on the case or anything else. And in that regard, it doesn't matter whether I'm with a real group or a case group. Okay? So, frankly, that makes your job easier. You don't have to understand all the ins and outs of their manufacturing process, or their product line, or their marketing strategies. You don't have to know all of that. You'll get some of that from the pre-work stuff that you do. But once you're to this point, all you need to do is, does this make sense, and do I see a connection here, and can I help them see the connections? He's playing more honest broker. Are you, can you convince me that there, I mean, he would, could even right. let them, right. he could even have right. a group help him see that connection. Yeah. I don't get it yet. Right. And push if, back. If there was something here that didn't make sense, see, I asked the question, so output is rewarded. Is, is, are we talking money here? Because I want them to tell me, no, no, it's not money. It's, it's, it's how things are prioritized. Okay, so I don't have to go into a lecture on money with them. If it was money, I would say, so if we gave X amount more money per hour or per shift or whatever, do you think these behaviors would then change? No. Okay, well then, then what is it here? Can you say what I mean? So if I see something that doesn't fit, you know, let's, let's say, for example, um, let's, let's just say under, under reward system, people, uh, the, the statement was, people are motivated to do their best. And I'd say, really? People are motivated to do their best. So that's why managers and techs don't connect on things that are important to the business, because they're motivated to do their best. Uh, they're very happy to do the job as usual, because they're motivated to do their best. See, I, I rub their nose in it if it doesn't connect. Uh, the process techs can't solve many equipment problems. Is that because they're not motivated to do their best? Is that, what, is that why we have that problem? You see? And you just go down, and it doesn't hold up. But I just ask them the question, so how does that connect with this? I, I don't see it. That's the consultation. I don't see it. What am I missing? Well, we need to change the wording here. Or, frankly, we need to just take it off. That was wrong. Okay? But they're the ones making the judgment on it. I'm just throwing the questions back at it. You may be coming to this later, but if you have a cross section of you know on your panel here, and you have someone from production who writes up something like management only cares about output, and a manager comes and says, like, "Well, no, we don't." And what? How does that? How often does that sort of headbutting come in? And how? It, it how comes it up much manage? less often than I would have predicted. Okay. Uh, point number one, if that is, is a solo statement, management doesn't care, or management only cares about production, mm -hmm. and that's one posted up there, that's one issue. But if, that is, if that's one statement out of eight mm -hmm. in that cluster, and other people have used other words, mm -hmm. okay? But it's in there. 
and say, okay, so that's the issue. So how do we summarize that? Right. And if we really get the fly in the wall, it's not that management doesn't care about, only cares about production. It's management only spends their time on production issues. Mm. That's a behavior. It's not judging the value or the belief system of anybody. Okay. We, that's why we get it down to the behaviors. And then, well now, once we've got that, what works here? Well, when you really get down to it, people are rewarded for output, and it's, you know, it's very clear. If you don't get results, you get in big trouble around here. <clears throat> and so people start to make the connections. It's, see, there is no blame here. Uh, this is part of the Peter Singe article that you have read, or at least you have to have a paper ready for next week on. <laughs> There's no blame in a system. There's no blame. It's looking at what's going on. Everybody is in the system, and there are a number of things that are going on that frankly are outside of their control. But when you get a chance to look at this, you start to take control of the system that's controlling you. Okay? All right, so next question. We're going to go to step four. Is there anything in the case around their formal strategy that explains the behaviors and these systems that are driving the behaviors? Is there anything that you see in the case? And we can open this up to anybody. Anybody see anything in the case from the strategy of what they were doing around engagement, around lean, that's mostly what we've been talking about, or those other priorities that the managers were, were also expected to deliver on. Do you see anything around strategy that makes this logical? percent engagement. Does that explain any of this? We want to be leaders in implementing lean. Does that explain any of this? It could. Part of it to me it oh. explains it is that from the beginning of the case it sounds like they're trying to compete with the generic brands, the cheaper brands of cereals. And so they're focusing on trying to become a, a low cost provider basically. And so they're not approaching the lean process from a let's, in, let's innovate and do things better be higher quality, the kinds of things that their employees would probably be interested in because that's been the brand thus far. They're trying to basically switch their brand around, which would be confusing both to employees and the current structures that they had before they tried to make that switch. Okay. Could we improve the quality and efficiency and, and uh, manufacturability of our cereals and lower cost at the same time? So that might be if we haven't made that clear and we haven't committed to it as a leadership team in the plan, maybe that would be a starting point to revise how we have defined the strategy, what we're trying to do. Okay? We can also be looking at a subsystem here. The plant managers are being you know, rewarded based on cost reductions and we're you know, one little cog in something bigger than, bigger than what we are. Okay. So some of the strategic issues that the plant has taken and has run with might need to be revisited. Because right now they, they are contributing to a rather unhealthy system of events that are leading us to the wrong results. And again, see the thing I love about this case, and this is real life, it's not we started out with HR's mandate, help us understand why engagement scores aren't higher, but the connections with this and the lean manufacturing initiative are enormous. This is a business issue, it's not an HR issue. And this diagnosis helps make that absolutely clear. Of, uh, it is a manufacturing. This is, this is the future livelihood of this plan, the future success scorecard of this plan is rooted in the same things that we found when we were looking only at engagement. Okay. So, so there are some things that need to be revisited. Okay? One of the things that I would say is, as the process group pointed out, look at the list of priorities that were in that case. You know, I mean, we've got to paint 
all the walls and ceilings because that's what the policy says and we have guidelines to do it and that's got to be done by August 31st because that's from headquarters. Is that the most important thing for this group of people to be, especially for the managers to be taking time away and working on? I don't think so. So maybe the whole process around priorities and priorities as formulated in strategy, maybe that needs to be revisited. For example, so so that that point might come out of a discussion of step four. All right. So now let's go to step five. Now, I'll try to make this again. This is every, anybody can contribute to this. What would people have as their assumption or their paradigm or their belief in their head that would make all of this absolutely logical? We're losing the marketplace because our costs are high. Okay, and how does that derive what we see here, Bowden? Because if you believe that your costs being higher are the, the reason why you're not being successful, then you are going to be very concerned with getting more out for less money. You're going to focus just on the output, the short term uh, production. Okay, okay. So it might reinforce this uh, output as usual. Uh, getting the job done as usual, okay, but more with less as the superimposed value over that, okay? Please. Um, there's also an assumption that changes are useless. Okay. And so no matter what the management comes up with to either, you know, conquer the cost or whatever, it's only going to last less than 12 months, so why even bother? So the group think in this plant is there's an allergic reaction to anything that comes from on high, from headquarters, even the plant manager, anything that comes from those sources, people move away from. Yeah, they, they're they, they don't okay. Okay. Part of it. okay. All right. Uh, all right. Fine. Other points, please, Beth. I think there's a mentality that they're not all on the same team and you can't trust someone who's not on your team. Ooh, very good. I mean, we brought the two outsiders in and you could tell that these people didn't work in that plant because they didn't fuss. But in the plant, they would have never allowed outsiders to come in to be part of us, okay? So you can't trust outsiders is a mindset that could very well line up with a lot of this stuff. Okay, what else? CJ? I think there's a belief from the leadership standpoint that you know, only a to a certain level, only a certain level needs to understand why and where we're headed as a business. And mm -hmm. only a certain level can add value to that direction that we're taking as a point. Okay. You know, certain level can understand, but alone need to understand it. And I, I would even take that one a little further. Only certain levels can handle the reality. We've got to protect people at the bottom from the reality. They, they can't handle it. Okay. We can handle it, but they can't. As well as the other things that you said. Yes, yes. I think I think that very much is a part. Now, does that have anything to do with engagement? Oh yes. <laughs> does that explain any of this stuff that's going on? And the behaviors in the system that have emerged out of that? Yeah. Okay, what else? This is great. Other, other thoughts? What do people have? People on the floor, we know they're cynical and allergic to anything that comes from a new initiative. Is there anything else that people on the floor have in their head that explains any of this stuff? Um, let's see. What, what about... What do people on the floor think about innovation, improving the system? What's their mindset around that? There's a system in place that's been done for a long time that obviously somebody would have fixed it back a while ago if something was wrong with it. So just keep doing the way, doing it the way that it. Okay. So if this, if if my idea was really such a good idea, somebody would have done something about it before now. So it must not be a very good idea. Okay? Christopher? I think counterpoint to that, a lot of times what you'll find is on the floor they have all the answers. 
but they have no hope that it'll ever get implemented or oh, they can make beautiful, a difference. Beautiful. We, we, we know this better than anybody else, but we have no ability or power to make this become real. And instead we get all this, these garbage priorities from headquarters and we have to do this meaningless work instead of working on the real things that could help us. Okay, very good. Emily, you have one? Well, yeah, I was going to say, you've got the, the line workers who, you know, in the night shifts, they're, they're making repairs and doing what they can, and then the repair people come in the day and talk bad about it. Look at how this ridiculous way they put it together. And so coming up with creative solutions to problems is, is actively denigrated. Okay. Okay. So among the people at the at, on the floor, the production folks are the dummies. The maintenance folks are the aristocrats, but uh, they're not connected, and they don't they don't dirty their hands working with one another, and they don't trust one another. Same same reflection that we saw earlier. It's not just between management and the and the sh on the shop floor. It's also between groups on the technician level as well. Okay. Basically, that the position within the company defines how intelligent and capable you are. If you're so smart, why aren't you a manager? Okay, very nice. All right. You see now, uh, do we have a little more understanding of the 30 squares of the system in this plant, and what they might need to do if they really want to make lean manufacturing and engagement come alive? And it's not as simple as having a training program. Okay. All right. And now, um, okay. I think we'll stop there for today. Um, next week, we're going to talk about the logistics and facilitation. Any questions you had around the facilitation, about the pre work, groups to choose? Uh, kinds of questions you ask uh, ahead of time, et cetera, et cetera. We'll go through all of that. Um, we're also going to uh, prep you for approaching clients. So I'm going to give you some materials. We'll have, a, we'll have a handout, a rather extensive handout, on a kind of a, a way of approaching clients, helping them to connect with real business issues, help you asking them questions so that they identify what the real issues are that they're worried about and then see if we can find a way to help them with those kinds of issues. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what we'll do next time. Any other questions or comments from what we've done today? I do have one. Please, Marina. So I've struggled with definitions of different components, mm -hmm. just, you know, what goes into process, what mm -hmm. goes into structure, and some of them got shifted around. How important it is that you place them under you know, a particular category when the star model is kind of like goes all over the place and everything is connected together. Yeah, it's a very good question. It's a common question. Uh, because they are connected together and because in the model they're in the same position in terms of cause and effect, input and output, as long as we have those items up there, it doesn't matter which column they're in, in my opinion. Now, from a pure organization design perspective, I can make a case for a specific column for each of those. That's my deal as a consultant. It's not necessarily what's most important here. If there's something really off, I mean really off, then I might, I might help them with it. But it, it's, that's less important. Some groups get awfully hung up. They, I mean, they can't move because they can't decide whether something is a process or a system. And if it's really hanging them up, then I'll just move it into one and say, there, go. <laughs> and I may not have done it right, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, no, that's a very good question. It comes up a lot. So, Please, Sean. So those, those, those columns remaining there to kind of help focus all your thoughts on key columns? Because what we're going to do when we come around and do design work, and see, I'm going to have this on the screen next week. I'll have everything in the boxes on the screen. And when Brandon comes in and talks about their recommendations, just look on your sheet and see to what degree is there a connection between what we came up with in terms of issues and how you see the recommendations playing out. All right? um, and then as we get into design work, see, for example, if we say, well, we've obviously got a lot of work to do on our incentive system and our reward system. 
you, you know from this that trying to do a financial bonus of some kind is wasted money and wasted effort. It's not going to do anything. So what do we need to get at? We need to get at some dynamics between managers and people on the floor, which is a theme running all throughout this thing. So when we come to design, it helps us start to focus what do we need to be looking at in terms of improvements. Here we've got a bottleneck. We've got, uh, you know, uh, over here, our priority system is, is non-existent or broken, and our communication system is non-existent or broken. And so those are some things that need to be designed, because we're not doing it very well today. So those are some of the kinds of things. That's what these things give us, is food for design considerations. Okay? Some breaks. Right. Okay. And when you go to your client and you're being able to break this out for them in a similar fashion, whether it's five points or ten points or three points, because they understand the system that's gone into it with your help, they'll understand why they need to take those three priorities very seriously and do some things. And they'll also have some education on what not to do and what to focus on as they get into design. Okay? All right. Our time is gone. Thanks. Good job, everybody. Let's give a hand. Our six plus two. Very good work. I'm doing it. Okay.